This learning objective explains remote sensing and its principles. So remote sensing is the acquisition of information about an object or phenomena without making physical contact with the object. In this uh, technique, um, energy carries information. The energy um, interacts with the object and there are several processes through which the interaction can happen. Um, emission is where the object has its own uh, energy, it's emitting energy. Uh, but the other processes or interactions can be absorption, reflection, or scattering. Um, and this interaction becomes um, a change in the energy, so interaction becomes information in the energy. Uh, for example, in the form of emittance, reflectance, or scattering. And this energy, when it is detected by the sensor, um, it becomes information detected by the sensor. So here is uh, an example uh, for satellite remote sensing, where we have source as the sun, and the satellite has the sensor. The light from the sun travels through the atmosphere. It get it can get scattered by the atmosphere so we can learn about the atmosphere if we are interested. It may reach the ground surface and get reflected or absorbed and re-emitted by the surface. Um, and then when this information reaches the sensor we can learn about the surface or subsurface information. Um, we can also learn about clouds if the light is reflected by the clouds. So reflectance, emittance, absorption, um, and scattering are the typical measurements that we we make uh, at the sensor and then we convert those into information about the target. Um, the information from the target that we can acquire from remote sensing includes uh, the location which is basically called ranging. We can have color information about the um, surface which comes as reflectance um, and we can tell difference between surface features based upon that color. For example, these two lakes have different color of the water, which means the, the, the type of algae in the water is different. Um, based upon the emission from the surface, we can tell about surface temperature because the emissions are dependent on the temperature based on uh, Stephen Boltzmann law. We can tell about the roughness. So rough surface scatter more energy compared to smooth surface. Uh, we can also tell information about uh, moisture and biomass on the surface. Uh, for example, if it's vegetated surface or wet surface based upon how much um, light gets absorbed, scattered or reflected. And we can tell many other things about the surface. For example, the shapes, patterns and textures. For example, in this case, um, the hay field um, and shrubs have different texture. If you look at even though the color is very similar, the texture is different. Here we have uh, different patterns um, and shapes telling us about the surface that uh, there is lake and, and trees and grass. So how do we choose these frequencies um, depends upon atmospheric windows. These are the frequency ranges that pass through atmosphere unaffected. Um, so this dark line is the energy that is uh, received at the top of the atmosphere. And it is, it is not attenuated or um, in any way affected by the open space. But once it passes through the atmosphere, certain portions of this energy are either absorbed or scattered back um, into the space. And what, what remains, um, this gray portion, is what reaches the ground. And so as we can see, this visible portion is not very much affected by atmosphere. And that's why um, it's used for remote sensing. Similarly, some infrared ranges are also uh, not affected by atmosphere and radar frequencies, of course, are not very much affected either. So these are very popular frequencies that are used for remote sensing. Um, 
of the ground surface because if we are trying to look at the ground surface we would choose frequencies that are not impacted by the atmosphere. Uh, the bottom line is that we choose the frequency based upon its ability to interact with the target and its ability to pass through the channel or the intervening space uh, without an attenuation. So what once we have these frequencies selected um, the surface reflectance or emittance value in these um, frequencies tells us about the characteristics of the surface and these are called spectral signatures of the target surface. Um, it's the frequency reflectance or frequency emittance curve used to detect a target. For example, um, this green curve is a very unique uh, spectral signature uh, observed when we receive reflectance from vegetation cover. It has um, high value in green and low value in blue and red but then in near infrared it has a very high value. This is also called the red edge and when we see this um, difference in red and infrared we know that this is vegetation. Similarly, soil has its own very spec specific um, spectral signature as well as water. Spectrometers are used to measure spectral response of objects. This is usually done in a lab to learn about the spectral response and then that information can be used um, for data used, uh, retrieved using remote sensing sensors. For example, here is um, a spectral signature of melting snow at different temperatures. So based upon this previous discussion we can classify remote sensing in many ways. We can classify remote sensing based upon the energy it detects for example electromagnetic energy or acoustic energy or gravitational uh, field. Uh, we can also classified based on the source of energy, um, passive or active, or the type of sensor uh, characteristics, for example, radar, lidar, sonar, scanning or non-scanning remote sensing, imaging versus non-imaging remote sensing. We can also classify based upon a platform. We could be using satellites in space, um, aerial remote sensing deals with aeroplanes, uh, equipped with sensors. Unmanned aerial vehicles are lower uh, vehicles which are autonomous. Then we have tower remote sensing um, and automobile remote sensing. We can also s s uh, classify remote sensing based upon frequency use. For example, optical remote sensing, infrared remote sensing, microwave remote sensing, x-ray remote sensing, and hyperspectral remote sensing. And lastly, remote sensing can also be classified based upon the resolution. High resolution remote sensing has uh, more detailed versus moderate uh, resolution and then low resolution has the lowest uh, detail. So I'm going to talk about briefly about uh, classification based on energy, energy source, and uh, sensor uh, characteristics. So, um, if we look at the electromagnetic energy, um, it is it has um, um, optical remote sensing, infrared remote sensing, and microwave remote sensing. In the optical remote sensing, we are using the visible um, visible light, and in within the visible light, we have the uh, blue green and uh, red frequencies and uh, typically the sensors um, pick these three colors and they are combined to make an RGB composite. Um, LiDAR also uses light um, basically the visible spectrum and some infrared spectrum. The infrared remote sensing is primarily related to the temperature sensing. Um, the infrared band is divided into near infrared, short wave, 
um, length infrared, medium wavelength infrared, long wave in length infrared, and far infrared uh, region. And diff all of these are uh, used for different um, types of uh, remote sensing. For example, near, near infrared is uh, sensitive to chlorophyll. Um, so depending upon the, the, the need, um, different frequencies can be used, but uh, they are all sensitive to the temperature characteristics of the surface. Um, the here is a temperature map of a city where you can see that the city is hotter than its surrounding areas. The, in microwave remote sensing, um, the microwave frequencies are used, and this is the classification of microwave frequencies, there, and there are, there are very many. Um, some of these are restricted for military use, um, and others um, are used for uh, remote sensing. But one thing that makes these frequencies useful is that they are not very attenuated by the clouds or weather conditions. So, uh, and they also don't need sunlight for operation. So microwave remote sensing is used for all weather conditions and nighttime uh, remote sensing. It does not detect the surface in our typical optical sense, but it looks at the surface and observes the surface roughness and dielectric properties. So it's, it's a different view of the uh, surface. Um, if we look at the microwave region of the spectrum, these green uh, regions are where most of the frequencies related to radar um, uh, exist that are used for in, in microwave remote sensing. The other type of remote sensing is based upon sound. It's called acoustic remote sensing. And this is um, primarily used in seismography, sonar remote sensing, and ultrasonography. Seismography are really large infrasonic waves generated because of earthquakes. And these travel through the land, land um, or earth and they are detected by seismometers. The sonar remote sensing uses all frequencies and it is primarily used for um, mapping um, underwater and also subterranean um, land fe uh, features. And ultrasonography is popular in, for medical uh, purposes uh, such as ultrasound. Lastly, the geodetic remote sensing is where we observe changes in the gravitational field. These changes are basically because of the redistribution of water on the surface of the Earth, which changes the gravitational field. And there's the mission called GRACE, um, which has two satellites in tandem uh, operation. They're kind of going back, uh, back to back. And they detect these very minute changes in the gravitational field and use that to infer the amount of water or changes in the amount of water on the surface. The other type of uh, classification is based upon the source. If we have um, a natural source of energy, for example, sunlight um, or the emissions from the, of the target itself, then it is called passive remote sensing. But if we have our own source of uh, energy, then it's called active remote sensing. For example, um, in case of uh, passive remote sensing, we have radiometers which basically measure radiation um, and imaging radiometers. Similarly, spectrometers which me measure uh, different frequencies of the radiation. Um, on the other side, in active remote sensing, we have radars, scatterometers, lidars, and laser altimeters. The last one, last of these, is the um, uh, based upon the platform uh, classification. And in this case, um, we have satellite remote sensing, which covers uh, the air, uh, spacecrafts that operate above 250 kilometers at altitude. Then we have the aerial remote sensing, which goes from a few thousand feet to about, uh, almost 60,000 feet elevation. We also have balloon remote sensing, 
not very popular anymore but it it, it was a very popular way um, in the early 20th century uh, more recently we have the unmanned aerial vehicles remote sensing um, along with that we also have a uh, tower remote sensing where we install sensors on a tower and automobile re remote sensing so if you look at the street view in uh, Google Earth or Google Maps that came from uh, automobile remote sensing we also have handheld remote sensing where a person is carrying the sensor and ship remote sensing where the sensor is uh, on a ship 